Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser currently here in Genoa Bay, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it and some others up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. This week, it's back to work on MV Poem, and the reason for that is in a couple of weeks, I'm taking MV Poem to both the Victoria uh, Classic Wooden Boat Festival and the Port Townsend Classic Wooden Boat Festival. And as of right now, Poem generally lacks the ability to move well under her own steam at all. So let's jump in the shed and get some stuff done after we say good morning to Charlie. <laughs> And yes, we're back in the shed with MV Poem for a couple of weeks. Not so much to work on the pretty stuff now, but to get it running again. Because in two weeks, um, I go cruising with Lady Zephyrus aboard MV Zephyrus for two weeks. And then I come back and I get Poem and I take her to the Victoria Wooden Boat Festival, immediately followed by the Port Townsend Wooden Boat Festival. And that is some really relatively significant passage making. And currently I can't even start the engine or turn the rudder. So we have to do some stuff about that. Now there will be some aesthetic stuff as well. Um, the one coat of varnish that I put on here, I just caught in time and got it back inside the shed because the sun was already starting to cook it, but it's going to be just fine. And as well, we have to get some topside paint on it, but mostly functional stuff. The first thing I really want to get to is getting the engine running. So I've got it all opened up here and I've pulled all the wires and control cables and hoses out where I can figure out what's going on. There's no way I'm going to try and save what was there for an electrical harness. I'm basically routing every wire back to its component and I will rewire the engine completely so I know what's going on and if I have to trace some faults we can look after that. Okay so here's the final install of the helm arrangement and I've had to make a small modification which I'll show you in just a second. And that is that I've added a three quarter inch plywood spacer in behind here to move it out further. And the reason for that is I'm not going to be able to use that beautiful old bronze um, uh, Morse control arrangement. I'm going to use the Morse control arrangement that was on the boat when I got it. And the reason for that is it's just simpler and I can set it up quickly. Now what I didn't want to do uh, if we take the way this is made up here, this is the cover that goes here, and then this is the cover that goes here, and it's all grain matched. It's all made out of one piece. And I didn't want to cut a big hole in that one, plus I needed it to be bigger. I've actually made up another block, and here it is. Ready to go, drop right in there, and in that one can go the Morse controls. And they fit just in fact this will even open um, so I'm pleased with that it doesn't really look as vintage and as cool as I was hoping but the truth is they just bolt right on and I can get this thing moving uh, the other thing I'm working on today is an instrument panel and it's just going to be this quarter inch piece of um, sapelli mahogany plywood which I'm mocking up on the back now uh, so I can drill some holes for the four gauges, uh, the tachometer, and a row of switches down here. Although I'm not sure that's going to be the layout. But anyway, got to get the motor running, the uh, Morse cable set up, the fuel line, the coolant line, the exhaust, uh, in the next day or so, uh, so I can feel confident enough that the boat is actually going to be mobile. And then we got to work on things like navigation lights, horn, anchor light, all the kinds of things to make it legal, and then maybe I'll get around to some creature comforts, but hard to say. All right, let's get this muffler back on. <laughs> There's a few clamps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, has about 24 clamps on this exhaust system. Okay, now I just need to build some support for it. So what I've got here is a couple of pieces of white oak, um, and I'm putting one at the inside end of the boat on edge, so that it will be a little bit higher than over here, and I'm gonna pull that down to make sure we get a little bit of slope continuing downhill all the way around. And uh, I'm just gonna set these in with a couple of screws. And I'm going to use this bungee 
um, set in here and here to hold that down. So about there, I'll make a little hole to start that going. put a couple of blocks in against the bulkhead because of course the bungee is pulling it in sideways but generally very happy with that okay fuel system i'm not super thrilled about this but it's going to be just fine um the fuel tank is in underneath the cockpit sole and as a result the fuel level is about well it's about here and if I project that to about here I have to be very very careful that the fuel filter and I'm going to use this uh, diesel style fuel filter because there's no reason that I can see that I shouldn't in fact it was in the boat for a year and a half um, I want to make sure the top of it is lower than the um, possible fuel level in it because I do not want to lift the top off and have it siphon in and there really isn't anywhere sort of in the engine room area that I can do that so I'm going to use the base of this cabinet as my little fuel filter station and it'll do just fine it also means that the fuel line which used to end just under there where this filter used to be I don't have to put a, a splice in it it'll go straight into the filter and uh, everything will be hunky dory so I'm just going to put this right here, somewhere where it's easily serviceable, plenty high. Yeah, that's great. All right, and so this fuel line is going to go onto here. So simple. Two clamps as per ABYC regulations. I'm also going to put the fuel pump at this location because I want it to be somewhere really serviceable and this location is now going to be basically um, my little fuel arrangement. So I'm going to put this under here. However, I don't want to put it directly below um, because I need to be able to um, put a bowl under here to check for, um, uh, to drain it out in case there's any water. So I'm just going to put it against the bulkhead here as far back as is feasible and uh, we'll figure something out. Okay, I've made general sense of what's going on with the engine here. There was some very strange wiring, very strange wiring. But anyway, um, gas engines of this era are pretty simple, actually. Uh, you need power at the coil. Um, you need power at the starter. Um, uh, happily, the alternator on this is a one-wire alternator, very, very simple. It has an oil pressure switch, which I didn't know it had before, and it has a, um, a temperature sensor. So not much going on. Um, I've got it to the point now where I've connected up the heavy cables, in other words, the high current ground and uh, positive uh, to the starter motor, and we can see if it will bump. This is the wire to the starter solenoid. All right, that's good news. It still cranks. Um, not that I suspected it wouldn't. So we can move on from there. Um, fuel system is largely done. I haven't really connected it here yet because I want to make sure I purge the whole fuel system with some fresh ish gas um, on top of that I have to set up uh, a sea strainer which I have all the components but I just have to put it together and the bilge blower and I'm gonna do all that over there on the port side um, there's a, a general void in the bilge right there uh, behind the battery boxes 
and ahead of where the galley normally sits. So it does mean I'm going to cut that piece of sole, which I knew I was going to do, but I didn't know until some of the cabinetry went in exactly how I was going to do it. So let's get on with that. I'm going to use a fine tool and a spacer block to cut the sole three quarters of an inch out from this structure because that's how thick the face uh, trim will be on here uh, so that when the sole goes back down the line I'm about to cut the seam in other words will basically disappear at the very edge of whatever future cabinet tree comes here okay this is an annoying cut but what the heck And there we go. Alright, then we'll put this piece in right in here. Okay, good. Fits. I'm gonna pre drill. That is solid, which is good because I'm now going to attach this beautiful big uh, bronze sea strainer to it. Right about there somewhere. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice, 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 nice. All right, so the strainer is already connected up. All the hoses are on. I'm not going to go to too much trouble to sort of force it in any position. The way the bracket works, I can't actually get it up on, oh, sorry, this way around. Get it up onto the this uh, new beam I just put in because the output hoses are too low. So what I've actually done, I made a sort of a custom little notched piece of Douglas fir here, which is going to go right here, and that will allow me to put this on an angle that makes all the hoses very happy, and uh, it's secure and it'll be just fine. Right, and the lower mount is this sort of standoff arrangement with a zip tie and a bit of foam. All right, nice and secure, nice and easy access. Love it. So I can slide this up under here, around that bracket, and there we go. It's sort of funny to see a beautiful big bronze cast and then a zip tie to hold it together. But anyway, all good. Beauty. Okay, let's move on to the blower. Okay, there's a few elements to, to consider here. <laughs> I'm going to use this nice uh, new uh, Jabsco bilge blower, uh, three inch, plenty of blow for uh, this area here. And I'm going to mount it basically right there, which means I'm going to have to make a little um, block for it to sit on across those two frames and it'll run a hose down and in underneath the bilge and it'll run a hose up and over the side. Now, over the side, what exactly does that mean, Peter? Okay, well, we're gonna vent out the port side of the boat, but we're gonna have the discussion here on the starboard side well because it's close to the dock and I can explain what's going on. Okay, if I'm gonna have a three inch blower, I need to have a three inch hole in the boat somewhere for that air to come out. Uh, originally, it had actually, and if you have been following along with poem, it had actually vented um, out the top up through all the cabinetry. Well, that was a tremendous waste of space and not what I wanted to do. Now, and then it had been modified to come out this little hole here um, with a tiny little, fairly nice brass cover on it. But the hole is too small, the cover is too small, the location is very inconvenient, even though it is discreetly hidden when you open the door, but how often really is that? So, the hose is gonna come out around here somewhere. So I would be able to punch a hole about here and put some sort of beautiful bronze vent on here at some point, if I could find one and if I wanted to have a hole there. Much more likely I'm going to put it here 
and now <laughs> a hole in the side of the boat in the hull may seem drastic but if ever I was to figure out something different it's much easier to fix it here because it's painted here it's mahogany I can't really fix it other than with some sort of cover so the hole is gonna go about here somewhere and I don't have any sort of beautiful bronze vent arrangement or something I do have something in stainless steel which I'll probably put on it and I kind of hate to do it I really do but I've been all over the boat and to have a reasonably short run that makes sense there just isn't a spot happily on Jordy and for that matter Zephyrus the way the swoop works again I call this the swoop um, the deck actually stays flat and you get a tiny little bulkhead right here going down and that's where the ventilation is on both of those boats and it's very very convenient however this boat doesn't have that arrangement so I get to cut a three inch hole in the side of the boat Whew. okay that's in place and now to get the hose on it and to wire it up And how about a nice little P-clip for good measure? There we go. There we go. And I'll carry on routing that wire over to the helm as I do the wiring over there. So, how about a hose? All right then, so the suction side is gonna go down here into the bilge underneath the engine about, oh, I don't know, about there somewhere, I think. So we can cut this here. And I gotta go find some hose clamps for these. And the other direction is a little complicated because I do not have the three inch hole saw I need to go out through the side of the hole, so I'm gonna stick it out the window for now. Okay, so I've wired up the fuel pump and I'd like to flush some fuel through the system. Um, however, I don't know the polarity for this fuel pump and because it's a little, it appears to be a little gear pump, obviously polarity matters. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and help prime it a bit by pouring some fuel into the filter and uh, hopefully I can learn fairly quickly uh, which way the pump should go. It's not the sort of thing I enjoy doing. Now, I haven't attached the fuel line to the carburetor yet, so I'm just going to put it in this jerry can and uh, temporarily connect up the pump and see if it pumps in the right direction. It appears to be pumping bubbles into here, um, so I'm going to say it's backwards. I'll try that again. And there we go. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, primed, filtering, no leaks. Nice. All right, from this point on, I'm taking no risks. I'm keeping a hose handy as well as a fire extinguisher. Um, the next thing I want to test is, is there any leaks at the carburetor? I've reconnected the fuel line to the carburetor and I'm going to start the pump and uh, have a good look if there's any leaks at all. So let's pressurize it. Oh. That's enough certainly to fill the bowl and pressurize. Well, happy, happy day. Now it doesn't mean it's not pouring gas down the throat into the intake manifold. That's why I won't go on too long, but there's certainly no apparent leaks here which is very good news. Have I mentioned I hate gasoline engines in boats? Okay. Now the engine has a mechanical oil pressure gauge. It was in the dash before and I had to take it out. To remove it, I had to cut it. So I've actually just shortened it and reconnected it to the gauge right here so I can keep tabs on it during this test start. Of course, this will go back up in the helm later. So we'll just put that aside for now. Let's talk about ignition. Okay. This is the coil. 
if you understand or if you played with gasoline car engines much, especially older ones, uh, coil produces the spark, uh, the high energy spark for the spark plugs. Um, and the coil is triggered by points inside the distributor. I won't go into it too much, but basically you power one side of the coil, the other side of the coil goes to the points which open and close a contact, shorting it to the engine block, so that's what completes the circuit. In fact, it's opening the circuit that sets the spark off, but less more on that later. Now, most coils, at least of this era, were low voltage, six volts or so. Some of them are internally ballasted, so you put 12 volts right on them. Some of them are externally ballasted, so you use a ballast resistor like this. There's a really neat hack you can do with these on cars that don't run very well, but we'll talk about that later. Okay, so I've wired this up, and I've wired it up to a length of wire that's going to be long enough to get all the way up to the helm when the time comes. And it's connecting up to my little rat's nest of wires I have going on here, one of which is the blower, one of which is the fuel pump, one of, and one of which is the ignition. The last, of course, will be start. Ah, there's going to be at least one more step, actually, and that's to check the C-strainer. Um, the seacock is currently closed. I'm kind of hoping that this C-strainer... Gosh, this is nicely made. Wow, that's nicely made. Um, this C-strainer, I'm kind of hoping, is pretty close to sea level. Uh, so it will be able to fill automatically. My goodness! One short season and it's fairly full of junk. Yes indeed. I'm just going to take this out and give it a blast with the outdoor hose. Okay, with that all cleaned up we can put that back in there and um, make sure that the seat here is nice and clean. Make sure the o-ring here is nice and clean. Now the water level here a little piece of something just landed in there. Anyway, the water level here is higher than the impeller pump, than the um, seawater pump. So happily, that pump is already primed. I don't have to worry about it. I don't know if it's where it is in terms of uh, the level with the, um, the ocean out here, but I think it's actually a bit higher. So if I'd opened the seacock with this, uh, with the top off, it might have drained away. So I'm going to open the seacock and we're going to start the engine. Um, I'm going to go and make sure that the transmission is in neutral, make sure there's nothing fouling the fan belts, and we're going to give this a go. Alright, so to follow the rules, we'll start with the blower for a little bit. We'll add the fuel pump. We'll add the ignition. And we'll crank it. We're here to see if it's pumping water. And it is. No blue smoke. <laughs> well, hello there and welcome to the Travels with Jody Beer of the Week, coming to you from the beautifully varnished cockpit of uh, MV Poem in the boat shed in Genoa Bay. Let's get straight to the beer. Now, this is super interesting. This was gifted to me by Michael Zara, uh, of New York City um, and it is called Cabbage IPA from Better Half Brewing in um, Bristol, Connecticut and I'm super excited to try this. It was very kind of Michael to send this out to me. He's actually sent me a couple as well as something I'll talk to you about in just a minute. Uh, well, it's summertime and I have to get poem ready for the festival season. Now, normally over the course of the summer in, geez, this looks fantastic. Um, on this coast, there are dozens of uh, wooden boat festivals, some of which have faded away um, and some of which are still on, but I'm very grateful to be able to attend two, uh, which I think I've told you about already, the Victoria Wooden Boat Festival and the Port Townsend Wooden Boat Festival. I have to jump straight to this. It's on the other side of the continent, but this is a fantastic beer, if you like a hazy. 
It's a hazy IPA with lots of haze, with a very a little bit of floral, a little bit of citrus. Oh man, that's good. Not very hoppy for an IPA, but really, really good. Okay, anyway, yeah. Very excited about getting to those festivals, but uh, in the meantime, I do have to get Poem running, and um, between now and then, I'm also going on another cruise with Lady Zephyrus aboard MV Zephyrus in the Southern Gulf Islands, so I'm really looking forward to that as well. All right, we have to congratulate last week's winner of a Travels with Jordy uh, t-shirt, and that is Chris Sturgeon, uh, 1571. Chris, get a hold of me, and we'll make sure you get your t-shirt. Cheers. really is fantastic thank you michael um i'd like to thank two new patreons uh that came aboard in the last little while and that's michael sima as well as michael reifish wow all these michaels um well uh, congrats uh, thank you very much to both of you i'm very very grateful cheers a day of michaels okay listen i mentioned that michael azara also sent me something really cool and that is this beautiful big Samson post. Um, if you've been following along, I had already been gifted a lovely Samson post uh, for Jordy, uh, but its size was a little small and perfect for poem. It is now sitting on the foredeck of poem. And this nice big one will be just perfect uh, for Jordy. I love these old bronze uh, Samson posts, I just do. And uh, along with this and the beers, Michael also sent me a lovely note um, describing his uh, life with wooden boats and um, the work he's done with them. So again, thank you very much, Michael. It's a lovely treat to have all of these. Okay, now all you need is a word of the week. And because I'm festivals on the brain and because I hope all of you are enjoying some festivals this summer, the Travels of Jordy Word of the Week, this week will be festival festivals either. We'll do just fine. Cheers, you know what to do with it. See you next week.